previously on Da Vinci's Inquest. This guy sleeps with the dead. What is he after that he can't buy from these women? Death. Well, we have the possible witness now, as of this morning. I don't know. I, uh, I think I blacked out. I don't want rumors of a necrophile getting out to the You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like a gag order. Don't you dare talk to me about affairs. I remember yours. I haven't really kissed a woman for a long time. Lucky me. Well, I was hoping that you might be able to help me find my sister. Roxy. <laughs> you remember interviewing some guy woke up beside a dead woman? He runs a cafe down on Gore Street. What's your name? <laughs> the cops have a suspect in the awkward thing. You can only prove that he had sex with her, not that he killed her. The guy is a hunter. They're the game. God forbid it's your day to get back. Thanks for everything. I enjoy your company. This is a real twisted villain. Constantly telling ourselves stories. Stories in our heads. What's gonna happen when this happens? What's gonna happen when that happens? We do it all the time. Except for the alcoholic. They have no mental picture of the future. Really? And why would that be? It's neurophysiological. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. The reaction to the drink causes a loss of connection between imagination and action. He becomes disoriented. Disoriented? How disoriented is this guy who stalks these women this way, who entraps them this way? Come on. Well, because he has a plan. It's a very short-term plan, but the plan is to get a drink. And then he moves to stage two. And he tries to find a woman who's alone and vulnerable. Then he buys her a drink. Yeah. He's an opportunist. Yeah. Not a strategist. Oh, I can feel that coming. Well, in, in your opinion, doctor. My professional opinion? Yes, doctor. Okay. <laughs> what category would I fall into? Would I be a strategist? Or would I be a opportunist? Hmm. You know what? I think I'd have to say you're both. I'm both. Hmm. What a cop out. Oh, no. What time did you get in? Me? I was already here. What time did you get in? Well, it was late. I didn't want to wake you up. You sure made a lot of noise for someone who was trying to be quiet. I had a couple of drinks. Oh.
got away from him last night. I don't get the seatbelt. Why does he strap himself in? Yeah, it makes you wonder. It's not like he's going anywhere. Dom, uh, it gets worse upstairs. Is this his son? His son, yeah. I guess he didn't realize the monoxide would come upstairs. What a stupid prick. Huh? Dumb, stupid prick. What's happening with Joseph? O'Leary and Cosmo are paired with a couple of plainclothes vice to watch him. I found out where he lived when he was a kid, out near the track. Really? That's my old neighborhood. You have an address? Yeah. Yeah, I just threw in here. Usual place. Yeah. Ah, Chad. You got it. Hey. hey. Are you on the double? I'm fine. Dad sucked on the tailpipe and the uh, son was sleeping upstairs. Oh, I need a coffee and a cigarette first. Is there um, something unusual going on? Well, something's wrong. I don't like the fact that he was restrained by a seatbelt. Huh. Well, I don't know. Are you in on this? No, this is Leo's, unless he asks me or tells me otherwise. I'd like to have a word with you if I could. All I'm having is a cigarette. Okay, I'll be with you in one second. Sure. I'm looking for the phone. This is Roxanne's brother coming. Uh, I think he's heard some of the details. Dale, can you can you smooth the moment for me? You weren't straight with me. Yeah, I, mean, I apologize for that very much. Uh, no, this is the guy I want you to talk to. This is Detective Shannon. Um, I think he can explain better. Excuse me. Well, it's a pretty complicated case. We got a lot of unanswered questions. It's an ongoing investigation. He told me it was an alcohol overdose. And now they're holding Roxanne's body as evidence? Don't bullshit me. We're thinking maybe it wasn't an accident. Tell me about the stomach contents. Well, it didn't amount to anything substantial. Oh, come on. I didn't keep the earlier ones that I thought were accidental, so we've only got Jane Doe and Flowers. Both of them had fish and chips. Well, that's great. That's brilliant. So you'll testify to that? Sure. Great. And then the lawyer is going to say, can I positively say they came from his restaurant? No, you can't waffle on that. They'll blow you out of your chair. I won't waffle. I will say no. That evidence doesn't prove anything anyway. Maybe the suspect cooked their last meal for them, Patty. Maybe the suspect has fish and chips in his menu. I'm just asking to go back and find something for me definitive. Just go back and even take a look. Okay, please? You know, I really hope you're not pressuring me to change my opinions. Because if they ask me, did anyone attempt to influence my testimony, I won't waffle on that okay, either. Okay, so that's it. You just want to wash your hands of this whole affair, correct? My job is done. No, your ass is covered. Oh, you prefer it wasn't. Well, would you embrace a strategy where we wait and see if he takes another woman to the mattress and then try and zoom in there at the last minute and catch him in the act of trying to kill her? Oh, is you, that what you think is good? Your alternative strategy is for me to lie who about the it? forensic who evidence and lying? forget he may not be guilty. You know he's guilty. No, yes, you do. I don't. He's guilty. No, no, I don't know that, and that is just the point. I am a pathologist. That is my expertise. It is not my expertise to judge his guilt. You seem to be confused about that right now. Oh, I'm confused? Yeah. I think we searched through all of our files for all the alcohol ODs going right back to 1960, okay? Gee, what year was this guy born? Maybe we should just start then. Actually, open it up for the whole city. Why were we stood in the downtown east side? I don't see anything that's externally inconsistent with carbon monoxide poisoning. You like a good case, don't you? Yeah. I used to wake up on my days off wondering if I was missing a good one. Oh, yeah. Gets under your skin. Yeah. Kind of like an addiction. <laughs> that's sick? Fairly. Wayne. Well, we both missed the boat on this alcohol killer. We could use some hard evidence. You didn't find anything new? No, nothing new. You want a stick for the opening? Nah. Call me when you're ready to do the kid. Sure.
this girl? I don't know. I saw her the other night. Lucky she's not his type. Yeah, well, she's somebody's type. Hey, you guys still on the wagon, are you? Good man. You know that uh, father-son suicide thing? Yeah. Father didn't know the son was there. Thought he was at his mother's. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, not why I came over here. Came over here to clear the air. Take more than a 26 or do that. <laughs> well, that's a start. <laughs> I met that prick, you know. I'm the asshole who let him slide. You know what that feels like? I do. It was eight years drug squad. Had a lot of big fish get through the net. But this is not the same, Leo. But that's right. You were with the horseman. Undercover. Yep. I don't know, you see, that's what I would do. What would you do? Well, if the guy didn't know my face, I'd buy the asshole a drink and I'd get right inside his shirt. That's what you do? That's what I would do. But you know what they say, if you're falling, dive. Yeah. <laughs> Leo. Thanks. What? I, I was just noticing that you still wear your ring. Oh, yeah. People tend to do that, you know? They wear um, little items, things that send messages to the unconscious. My wedding ring is sending messages to your unconscious? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a slave bracelet. You want to know what it's really saying? Mm-hmm. Saying don't be the same fool twice. <laughs> oh shit. Look at that. It's like that goddamn battery bunny. Yeah? Fish and chips. Anything to drink? Coffee. live around the corner from you in high school. Come on. No, don't remember. Oh, I remember you. You used to live on Triumph Street, and I was living two blocks away in Oxford Street, okay? What was the name again? Alan DeMarco. I was the guy that had that bulldog used to crap on your lawn all the time. <laughs> hey. You do look sort of familiar. Hey, Charlie, is this your place? Yeah. Really good. Nice place. This is the real deal. Keeps me busy. What are you up to? I was driving a hack for a well. while. Oh, yeah, I was selling a little real estate, too. Yeah? Thinking of selling this place. Well, let me tell you something. As an expert, you probably get a real good price for this place. <coughs> Listen, Charlie. Do me a favor, just throw another little... Piece of fish on that order, will you? <laughs> All right. All right, cut. He could be in there right now, blowing the whole thing. But this is good. You like it? batter. Put cider in it. Cider? That's a good idea. Where would you pick up something like that? I went into the camps when I was about 17. Started cooking there. <laughs> Been at it since. 
I tried working out in the bush. I lasted about six months. I just can't go that long without regular tail. Been married at least a hundred times. What about you, Charlie? You ever get married? Doesn't suit me. No? I like uh, variety. Doesn't mean you can't get married. Never stop me. <laughs> Just not my style, I guess. Hey, Charlie, you feel like going out and grabbing a couple of drinks tonight? No, I gotta clean up and go. What would you say if I said I was buying? No, uh, come back some other time. Maybe I'll take you up on it. Okay, well, you're busy trying to get out of here, so I'll just take off. It was great seeing you, Charlie. She's over at the hospital on lecture. Okay, I want you to compare stomach contents with Roxanne Flowers and Jane Doe with this. And that is? Guess where I dined last night? Joseph's Cafe. And I took home a little doggy bag. Not exactly an ordinary seizure of evidence. Not exactly normal circumstances, Sonny. We began our watch at 6.30. At 7.30, we observed the coroner, Dominic Da Vinci, enter the cafe. He remained for a meal, the waitress locked up at 8, and about 20 minutes later, the coroner left. What was all that about? I don't know. Da Vinci left after about an hour, and Joseph went home and stayed there. All right. Yeah, Dr. Flynn, please. Sergeant Regan. I'm not trying to undermine anybody. What? Oh. Do you want to tell me what you're up to? Well, it depends on what you do with the information. Any results? I haven't finished. You are taking this too far. You used to admire my commitment. Well, that must have been during the period when you didn't question my opinion. Well, it could be my judgment was affected by our relationship. Now, I want to look at the evidence for myself, right here, okay? That will not be allowed as evidence in court. I'm aware of that. Oh, so this is just an exercise. Yeah. This is for my own personal information. Do you mind? Where have we gone? You are preparing for an inquest. In the two samples of Roxanne Flowers and Jane Doe, we found patterns of musculature very similar to those found in your sample. Great. I'd guess it's dogfish. Yeah. And so he's the only guy serving dogfish, which I doubt. Serving cheap fish doesn't make any color. Just uh, get back to me when you get something yeah. definite. Uh, I went out drinking with my first partner. Mm. Yeah, you would like this guy. He's got a mind like a steel trap. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, 1965. Kid Joseph is living in the East End. Yeah. There's a young girl coming home from a high school dance. Same high school that Kid Joseph is attending. What? Yeah, but she never gets home. Guess where she lived? Don't tell me near Joseph. Yeah, well, how near? Please, Leo. Right across the alley. No. And she's never been found. Really? Whoa, I got a buggy. Boss man's on your tail. Just wait for me one second. Dominic. What? Helen informs me you've asked her to search databases for alcohol overdoses going back to the 60s. Yeah, yeah it's a long shot. But maybe it started early, escalated to murder. You never know. I got one. Well, she didn't find anything. So let's have that be the end of it. Well, I just want to be able to tell myself at the end of the day that I did all I could. I'm telling you, you've done all you could. Okay? You've got this case now where it's an ongoing police investigation, which I understand you jeopardized uh, by visiting the suspect, Dominic. Hardly. Give I me don't a... want you spending any more time on this. Well, let me tell you something. If they don't make an arrest, or if they do make an arrest and don't get a conviction, I'm going to go to the inquest. I'm going to want to go to the inquest on this. You understand? If and when that happens, I'll be running it. You are off the case. If you continue to pursue it, it's your job. Yeah, he's a queer one. He poisons alcoholics and then he spends quality time with the corpse. Huh? Solid citizen type. But you interviewed him after the girl uh, across the alley went missing, right? I interviewed him 
She wasn't involved. I made you a copy of the file. Brilliant. You interviewed Mrs. Josephs. Yeah, she alibied the kids. Uh, she was at the same dance the missing girl was. Was home before she left the dance. Yeah? And that was corroborated by a teacher at the dance. I hope this helps you out. It's beautiful. What can I do for you? Oh, catch them. Thank you. I'm from the Vancouver Corners uh, office, and my name is Dominic Da Vinci. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions about a former neighbor of yours. Oh, no. No, no. I, I don't keep much contact. Well, th this you might remember. It was 30 years ago, there was a young girl went missing across the alley from you. I remember. You don't forget when a girl goes missing and they suspect a member of your family. So you remember that night that the uh, young girl went missing? You remember that pretty well. Well, he he um, he showed up, and I, I I wouldn't let him in. He was drunk and looking for a scrap, so I I wouldn't open the door. I'm sorry. Uh... No, I see it. No, it says here that. Uh... You told the detectives he was home and he was in bed early that night. You talking about my son or my husband? You never mentioned uh, a husband in the original interview. Well, he, he's dead now. So would it be okay to talk about it now? So, Greg, he, he, he came home. He was drunk. He didn't want to let him in. This is your husband. Did he go away? No. Where'd he go? Well, I, I made him sleep in the, in the garage. Well, it burned down a while after that. I think Charlie did that. You know, you never mentioned the fact that your husband had been here or that he was in the garage. No. You were afraid of his reaction? Yes. Now, what about your son? Are you in touch? No, no, no. We, we don't keep in contact. Charlie woke me to ask if he could take his father out a blanket and pillow. Oh, thank you, dear. Did he? Yes. Was your husband there in the garage? He was there in the morning. I saw him leaving early. And later that night, he came back and he said that if anybody asked to say that I hadn't seen him in weeks, did he tell Charlie the same thing? Well, he must have. Charles didn't say anything when the police asked him what he was doing or where he'd been or did he see anything. So you must have suspected something then? Oh, yes. Well, I, I knew he must have done something. Do you think your husband had the girl in the garage? <laughs> yes. Finds the girl in the alley coming home. She's drunk. She's in a fighting mood, she says. Something happens. Brings the girl in the garage. If it takes him out of blanket, he sees something. The father threatens him, tells him not to say anything. Boy, you find your father with a body? It's bound to screw up your adolescence a little, huh? Yeah, let's hope our shrink doesn't pick up on it. It'll paint him the victim. Any chances, any evidence out there still? In the garage out of third floor, we could take a look. 
Take a forensic squad out. See what you can find. But stay on Joseph. I'm gonna do this search without tipping him up. Yeah, it's all for shit anyway. Kid was a juvenile when it happened. I wasn't too pleased to hear that you jeopardized our surveillance operation. Well, I thought he was open to an approach, and I didn't think there was much of an operation to jeopardize. Well, I'm sure you did things different when you were with the horsemen. I told Jim I was going to register an official complaint with the Attorney General. That's your prerogative. In light of you bringing forward Mrs. Josephs, I decided to let that pass. I'm not vindictive. But in future, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know about any of these innovative ideas you may have before you put them into practice. Okay. Sounds fair. I would recommend uh, an undercover ASAP. He's talking about putting his place up for sale. I'm looking for someone appropriate. A woman. That would be good. Perhaps a native officer. Have you got any of those? Yeah. And uh, one last thing. What's happening with Leo? If he's going to write out his term on a desk... I could use a good investigator. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. Like something. I think it's a bracelet. What was the kid's first name? Marilyn. Marilyn. We have the Y. Shannon here. I'll be right down. Hey, Gloria. I haven't seen you in a while. The cops have been looking for you. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Went down to Seattle. Oh. How's the work down there? Okay. Your sister used to work this neighborhood. You talked to her pimp? No, she didn't have one. People in the neighborhood remember her, said she had a really good sense of humor. But she was just another Indian hooker. And who cares, right? Some people might look at it that way. Marcy, you heard from Audrey? She was going to help close up. She didn't tell you? She went back home to Kamloops. Did she say why? I guess she got it in her head. This wasn't a safe place to live. Well, that's too bad. You try to make friends with them, and they use you for what they can get. <laughs> I guess what happens now, it's her own damn fault. She used to get the occasional free meal in that restaurant over there. Yeah, she used it as a mailing address. The cook knew her. Yeah, he was real helpful. Pillar of the community. That's in there. That's the guy who killed her. He kept giving her alcohol until she drank herself to death. And that's not all. We're thinking he did maybe half a dozen others the same way. Well, why hasn't he been arrested? Not enough evidence. And there never will be unless we can catch him in the act. Then maybe we can get him on assault, which is good for four to five years, and then he's out. Why did you tell me this? Because I want you to understand that we're doing all we can. He's under surveillance. I appreciate it. 
If you ever feel the need to come back to town, make sure you let me know. I hope we find something more tonight. One of these neighbors is gonna get curious and call the media. How's she uh, handling it? Like she finally shook the family curse. I need you to give us a room where we can be next to them. I don't drink from an open bottle. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do, knock you out? Well, that's no fun for me. <laughs> okay. Mm. Let's party. Down a hatch. Check this one. Go on, Ted. Crack it. Father, blanket and a pillow.
for you. Tony says she can't take it down. She bolted when he went to get a bottle. Good. over the uh, stomach contents. I think that we can definitely tie Roxanne and Jane Doe to Joseph's Cafe. You found something in the fish? The potatoes. I found a rare infestation of worms, nematodes. Take a look. Normally, they're prohibited from going on the market, but he must have been buying them cheap somewhere. And they were in Roxanne, Jane Doe. If we can get the police to uh, legally seize a sample, we may finally have something that ties them to him when I say die. Here. What should it cost that? No. Don't feel bad. It took me five years. Ended changing a flat. You're in early. Mm. Our friend Da Vinci. I hate to say this. We found the body of the missing girl. The prosecutor thinks with that and the mother's statement, we got enough to tie Joseph's to it. Oh, really? Well, that's great. There's a woman waiting for you, an interview. She says she remembers something. I thought you might want to hear it. It's all coming together, will you? I'm gonna change my opinion on the stomach contents. Hey, he's going to trial anyway. Every little bit helps. What'd you find? Uh, worms in in the potatoes. In the potatoes? I ate those potatoes. It's, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about that uh, father's suicide and, and the seatbelt thing. Yeah? You know how in my car you always have to do it with the belt to stop that annoying bell from going up? Pretty good. Pretty good. <sighs> 
Thank you. Yeah? Okay, you're right there. drives a, a beige van. I saw him last night. <sighs> okay. Let me get some paper and a pencil and I'll take a statement. Homicide, please. We got someone on Joseph's? Yeah, they're on his back door. All right, let's get the crown in. Let's find out what the charges are. We'll bring him in today. Son of a bitch. Homicide, Shannon here. Yeah, I'll take it. Somebody laid a beating on him, all right? Well, what goes around comes around. Okay. What time did you find him? 6.15. They spotted him under the lion's gate. Last saw him at 2.30 this morning. How the hell did he slip through surveillance? We'll be looking into that. Hi. I'm either busy or not in at the moment. Please leave your name and your number. Oh, uh, hi. It's me. Uh, I just thought I'd, like, give you a call and say hi. Hello? Oh, uh... Hello, is, uh, is Michaela in? No, my wife's in the shower. Can I take a message? Uh, well, uh, just tell her, uh, just ask her to call the coroner's, uh, office when she gets uh -huh. a moment, okay? okay. Thanks. We have to get our ducks in a row. I want you at the news conference. Oh, no. No, I don't want that. Um, if anybody should get the credit, it's Sunny. She flagged it. Your call. Dramatic developments in a string of gruesome murders were announced by Chief Coroner Dr. James Flynn at a press conference this afternoon. My team of pathologists were the first to bring me the details of these cases. After some review, I scheduled a meeting with Staff Sergeant Regan, and together we examined the details of several deaths that were initially ruled accidental. This led to a suspect who was found dead early this morning. We feel confident that this was our perpetrator, and further review will close the file. I would like to add that this is a fine example of persistence and cooperation between the police and my office to solve a very complex and disturbing case. You prick. <laughs> <laughs>